Hey what's up everyone welcome back to another video today we're gonna be looking at the Mara vs Sarah from last weekend's global finals I myself just came back from the event I am Katowice which was a $500,000 stack of two tournament and honestly the games they were amazing especially for Terran I feel like they were uh, honestly it felt like a million amazing games and I'm not gonna look at all of them but I'm gonna look at a bunch so for the next week or maybe multiple weeks I'll be uploading the coolest games from the events analyzing how the best Terrans in the world did their stuff now for the first few, I'm going to be looking at Mars builds, uh, probably everyone's favorite Terran, or not everyone, but most people's favorite Terran. I'm going to be looking at his different matchups and stuff, but I'll also move on to the other Terran fan favorites, such as Air Marine, Cure, Clem, uh, and some of the others from the open bracket as well. I think Spirit had some amazing games, and uh, Ryung as well, not to forget. Maybe someone will do a POV analysis of me. That would be nice. <laughs> Probably not, because my games are not that great. But all right, let's get into it. So this game is Mara vs. Cero, as you can see. Uh, it's on Mara's best map on Hardwire. And yeah, what well, basically what Mara has been showing us for the last year or two years is that he really goes for like the perfect formula kind of games. Like he plays macro games, figures out the best possible way to do it, best late game transitions in particular. Um, and I just thought it'd be really nice to get an update on how exactly Mario is playing TVZ these days. Now, this game is definitely the one where Mario's playstyle looks the best. Uh, and this is also, I, I talk about this a lot. For Mario, the maps actually do matter a lot. This is by far his best map, I think. Even though this is generally not seen as a fantastic Terran map, it's either balanced or maybe a little bit good for Zerg, depending on styles. For Mario, this actually seems like a very Mario favorite map, uh, which is very interesting to see that, uh, you know, one single player as a map that's that good for him. I was actually going to open with the Marine first there, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, I, I, I watched this game live on the stage and actually remember this game to open a bit different. I thought it was just a very standard Reaper opener into uh, Battlecruiser, I believe. But I guess I was already wrong on that. So he's going to get the factory after. Does SCV scout against Cero? Uh, I, I don't think um, SCV scouting... Like this was from a best of five, right? And SCV scouting in a series is a must. I think you can skip the SCV scout sometimes, but to do it in a best of five every single game, probably not great. So the fact that he threw that SCV scout in there, I'm not sure if he did it every game or not, but it's a, it's a good move anyway. Honestly, I feel like it never really hurts too much. So he's actually going to go up to a second gas. All right, this is really cool because I, like I said, I remember this game to be different. I thought this was a 3cc opener to BC um, because he is going to be playing mech this game, but he's actually going to go for his Marine first uh, opener into the reactor, getting single aliens from the factory as well. Uh, and I do remember this was Maru's favorite build from this event against Zerg. I think he tried it at least in every single series once that he played against Zerg. Uh, so there must be something to it, right? He's keeping all the units in the main. He's also not even moving out with the heli, and this is interesting to me. I think this could be a bit of a mind game because if you move out with one Hellion, I feel like your opponent already gets a little bit suspicious, right? Because why are there not two Hellions? What is this weird stuff you're doing? And he's going for the Medivac. So uh, the way he does this, he gets two Hellions, uh, five Marines, and then he switch over the factory on the reactor usually. Um, in this case, I'm kind of surprised he's not making a third Hellion because he wants to get two more Marines. But he, did, he has been doing this consistently. Like he actually does not get the third Hellion and just waits for the Marines to finish to pop it down on the reactor. And that's probably what we're going to see over here as well. There we go. And then he's basically going to do a 7 marine drop. Uh, try to kill as many overlords as you can. Sadly for him, uh, Sarah's playing overlord speed. So those are probably not going to go down anytime soon. He's going to make a viking. Now this here, I think that's actually reactive. I feel like, I'm not 100% sure on this. But I feel like normally you would not make the viking with this opener. Because you also want to get your third CC down, right? And the viking is 150 minerals. And I think he made this viking as a response to... Uh, the Overlord speed. You can see he's trying very hard to avoid that Fusion Core for being scouted. But Serral being the god that he is. Um, uses two Overlords at the same time to get the intel anyway. And he does scout it. Definitely a good attempt by Mara to deny that scout though. At the same time as Hellions are just chilling over here. Dirt CC coming down. Do notice that with the Viking he does skip his Hellions for a little bit. So he can actually afford to make that third CC. Which is nice. And he looks like he's also skipping Hellions to make a battle cruiser. So the battle cruiser is definitely pretty important. So this attack pretty much always looks the same. Uh, he goes for seven Marines and four Hellions. And he actually... The coolest thing about this build so far to me seems that he can mix up the aggression. 
Like one time he actually attacked with everything at the front. Now he's gonna switch it up and send the medevac into the main. As you can see, Serral probably watched the replay where Maru went in the front because all his units are here in the front. Um, and then Maru's just gonna go into the main. So you can definitely mix up your aggression a little bit with that. If you play it on the ladder when you don't repeat games against opponents, you should probably, you know, just find the single best version that works for you the most because, yeah, usually you don't really get to play mind games on the ladder, right? Am I actually... Look, he's making macro mistakes, guys. This is this is beautiful. I, uh, you know, I always get happy when these really good Terrans make, like, basic mistakes like that because whenever I do them, I always feel so bad until I realize that they do the same. I think he... Yeah, he straight up forgot to make his Hellions for a little bit because he had... As you can see, he already made his factories and he had more than enough money to start everything else. Battle cruiser, orbital factories and stuff. Uh, so there was no reason for him to skip those Hellions. So there's a little bit of a mistake there. Not the biggest deal, of course. Amar is going to follow this up with two factories and double armory. Uh, important thing to notice is that he usually delays the battle cruiser, the second one, to actually afford this stuff. And the biggest reason why that will be important for you guys is because mech usually gets punished by some kind of like roach corruptor timing or just a straight up roach island and if you don't get these factories in time you simply will not have the tanks to deal with it right Here you can see mars is trying to get maximum value on this map and actually on most maps these days there's actually a corner to hide in so usually the way you want to use the battle cruiser is just like that you get as much damage as you possibly can uh Cero a little bit too good on the micro so he didn't lose those queens but still a few drones is a few drones and then you can teleport it back home and repair it when it's done now you see Maru actually kept this medevac alive on the right side, so he can keep putting on uh, pressure, which is really good. There's a, actually no cancel there, so this move already paid off pretty much. That's 300 minerals down the drain for Sero. And that's always how you want to use these units. With Terran, you usually do not want to sacrifice your units too fast. And the reason is that with Hellions, with a medevac, with a BC, you technically have some kind of unlimited potential. You can kite, you can drop over and over. And as the game goes on, you're going to get more and more value from these units. So saving them, um, it's, it's pretty much always a good move. Obviously, there will be some exceptions, but it's pretty much always a good move. Now, one thing that I found interesting here is that Maru actually gets his upgrades, his factories and stuff. And then after that, gets his fifth and sixth gas. It really felt like he would have needed to get those faster, right? But um, it seems like he can actually afford all that with just four gas, which... Uh, yeah, I'm a bit jealous, so I feel like my guys don't mind gas that fast, but <laughs> probably just being stupid. Now, this is when it's going to get really interesting, because Serral's actually playing Mudas. And Mudas are in a bit of a weird spot against mech. There's a lot of people that think they straight up suck against mech. For a while, Mudas were actually straight up the meta against mech as well. Um, and the reason is, when you play Mudas, Terran is forced to make stuff like Thors, and they will not be able to move out. So at the same time, Zer can take all the bases, and then, then once they're rich, they can start sacrificing... Ling Bane into the fourth, stuff like that, and never let you get up your eco. Uh, but they did nerf the Banelings a little bit against armored targets. And ever since that patch came out, I feel like we haven't seen Mudas against Mech too much. But Serral still thinks it's a good option, apparently, so that's very interesting. Now notice that Maru makes the fourth base pretty fast, actually before his extra factories. This kind of reminds me of uh, of his TVT. I don't know if you guys have watched a lot of Maru's TVT, but his fourth base, sometimes it's even before the fourth and fifth barracks. Uh, and he's pr following pretty much the same formula here. Uh, yeah. And I think it makes sense because it's hardwired, right? This map is so easy to defend on. Uh, he, he probably saw the Mudas already at this point. And if there's Mudas, you know you're not going to die to a timing attack. The thing you should be really afraid of uh, when you want to scout for timing attacks is stuff like Corruptors. Or maybe scouting a fourth base without drones on it. Stuff like that. But when you see Mudas, you see a little drones and links. You're probably safe and you can make an extra few bases. Let's look at the preparations he took for the Mudas. He has two mines here. That's actually a very important move. Two turrets per base, I imagine. Actually, only one turret here, so this base might be a little bit exposed. And then at the front, also a couple turrets. Also made a lot of cyclones, by the way, to deal with the Mudas. Um, normally, you would want these to be tanks, of course. But since it's Mutalisks, he actually made a few more cyclones. And I think this also has a little bit to do with hardwire um, on maps where... You get attacked faster when all ins and stuff actually happen. You cannot really make cyclones. In this case, the infinite value of the cyclone doesn't work because you're going to be pushed into a corner when roaches attack from this angle and cyclones will not be able to get the value they need before you die, basically. So against any time roach base composition, you always want to be making siege tanks. 
but in this case, the Cyclones work just fine. They're helping against the Mutalisks. But now there's also Swarmos on the way. And the best thing about Maru is that he always sets his eco up so fast. Like, he's on four bases, 86 drones. Uh, work, or SCV, sorry. It's absolutely buzzing. Uh, so even though he's about to get attacked, this economy is already perfect. But now it's going to get a little bit tricky. From now on, I want to watch it from Maru's point of view. To see how he deals with all this aggression at the same time. The BCs here are actually crucial, by the way. BCs are really good against Mutas. Uh, purely because they they just die really slow to them, right? Um, if 20 Mutas are attacking BCs, they will probably beat the BCs. Like, if the BCs are out in the middle of nowhere, it wouldn't be that great. But in this case, the BCs will just tank for all the other units and make sure you don't lose any. An important move to usually make against Mutas as well is to counterattack with the BCs. Because you will simply pull the Mutas back, uh, and then you can teleport back home. So his answer so far is just to make Thors and Hellions. Thors are actually pretty... It's funny. Thors are either amazing or terrible against Swarmost. And the reason is that if, if Thors get to shoot at the Locust uh, with their full splash damage, they can actually kill a lot of Locusts before they land. But if the Locusts are actually on the Thors already, your Thors are not going to be so happy. Okay. And you can see the, the game plan here for Mario is pretty simple. Uh, against Muta Swarmost, it seems like he has no intention of moving out whatsoever. Uh, he's very content sitting there with his sensor tower taking his fifth base. And, and yeah, this totally makes sense once again. The way Maru usually plays these mech, game, mech games these days is to actually transition into Ghosts. Uh, and create like this really perfect late game composition. Thor tank Ghost pretty much. Um, I think he might add some Liberators against Investors at some point. But Thor tank Ghost is pretty much where he wants to be. Notice how good the upgrades are for Maru as well. His 2-2 is about to finish. Means he's going to get 3-3 after that. One thing that Maru did miss is a sensor tower on the right side over here. Uh, I feel like if there was actually a sensor tower, that base probably will not go down to just Banelings. And I mean, Maru has enough CCs. That's actually key. If you have another CC to land right away like that, it's not the biggest deal. But obviously, preventing 23 uh, SCV losses would have been nice, right? And if he had a sensor tower there, I think he probably would have been able to do just that. Research. Now, normally... I feel like I would be very tempted to move out here because you're playing as Mutalisk Swarmhost. Uh, Swarmhost is very supply heavy. Mutalisk are not quite the battle unit. So it feels like you should be able to max out and go for it. Uh, but this game definitely shows that when you sit back, when you actually get all the upgrades and stuff, uh, the situation probably looks even better for you. Because I, I do feel like if you move out against Swarmhost, there's always a chance you get a really bad fight and lose your units. So Mario is playing it very safe. He's sticking to his... Uh, his strengths on hardwire right going up to that 3-3 i'm actually surprised we haven't seen the ghost academy yet uh this does show me that he does not have like a very how do you call this like a, a timing on which he needs to make ghost it's not like he plays the game thinking at 11 30 i need to make ghost he just reads the game right now there's a lot of pressure going on he doesn't want to spend the money to go for ghost and yeah it seems like the smart decision because his economy is still intact. 75 workers on 5 bases. He's getting his 3-3. And his money is relatively low. If he actually invested in making Ghost, he probably would be at a lower supply and not have that many units at this point. Uh, so it seems to work out. I do wonder though how he reads the game in that way. Like when does he actually decide to make Ghost? Does he wait for the game to relax? Um, does he just not want to make Ghost instantly against Mutas? That's something we could find out if we see more games of him, right? Like we need a little bit more of a pattern for that. Like right now, he's approaching max. He has the 3-3 three, three, and he has 5 bases. I feel like this would be the right time uh, to make Ghost. Obviously, we see everything that's happening in the game. I think Maru might probably feel like he's about to be attacked or something like that. Maybe Sarah's committing more to Mutas or it's Broodlords. Uh, Broodlords would make a lot of sense, of course, with a fast fire. And that's where the Ghost transition is going to start. So pretty much when he approaches max, uh, when he realized he was safe... Economy is intact. That's when the ghosts are coming down. So he's going to make three extra barracks and one ghost academy. So going up to four barracks. Probably going to slap down a second eBay as well, I think. I tried to theorize about the ghost upgrades you should get a little bit. And if you think about it, just armor should probably be fine because it's mostly about the snipes. But then again, the basic attack is pretty strong against stuff like Mutas and Zerglings. So maybe you should actually get the double upgrades. Amaro's gonna move out here. Um, 
I think this is pretty much just triggered by the 3-3 three, three timing attack. He's maxed with 3-3 three, three and his army is huge. Um, I feel like this was probably the biggest mistake by Maru we've seen so far. Uh, the army he moved out with did not seem quite capable to deal with Swarm Host Ravager. And the reason I say that is because there was not that many Hellbats. He was on creep, allowing the Banelings to kill the Hellbats and then the Swarm Host with the Ravagers to get in and kill the Thors. So that move out, it's well, I have to say it seemed like a mistake. I think in some way he does want to free up supply for the Ghost as well. Uh, but trading that inefficiently is probably not something you want to do. I think the move out, it made sense. Like he wanted to lose some supply. His, his army was big, he had the upgrades. So what I think he should have done instead was actually push out on the left side. Like he went straight here over the creep. But I think he could have pushed here on the left side and actually siege his base from the low ground, uh, making his position stronger against Banelings, denying this base on the top left at the same time. And that would probably have been a better way to approach it. And I think Maru fell for the same trap that I would usually fall for, which is... Um, this guy has units that are probably not that great against the fight. I'm 3-3 with mech. I can probably just aim through the middle and win. Uh, but here, that did not seem like the right choice and he got punished for it. But even then, since his economy has been so good, he's still rather, you know, pretty much maxed. Uh, 180 supply with a, with a small bank, a lot of CCs. And I think it's not looking too bad for Maru at all. Though Sarah did climb back a little bit. I think these are the kind of games that Maru is the best in where... I feel like you want to battle Maru with either you go for the kill move or you go for the extreme late game right away. And I think by making the, all those Ravagers, I think he might be playing or Serral might be playing into Maru's hands a little bit. Uh, because Maru usually, his defense is so good, he doesn't really die to like the light pressures with a bunch of Ravagers or some Banings rolling in there. I feel like the, the things that get him are usually the dedicated attacks or just a straight up like really good late game of course. He's also making medevacs. I guess those are to evacuate the ghost in case uh, anything goes wrong. Let's see how many command centers he has actually. He has three planetaries, five orbitals. Okay, so he's gonna be on, well, seven now I guess. Is it seven? Yeah, seven bases. Uh, probably gonna add some more. Sol always gives the perfect formula. He says you need to make eight orbitals and then you win the game. Um, I definitely do not literally quite win the game when uh, I get 8 orbitals, but that's what uh, Soul says, or Spirit, however you guys know him. And Maru seems to be roughly around that number as well. He had 8 CCs before, went down to 7, and now he's going to go up to 10. Now, so far he has 10 Ghosts. I want to know if there's something that triggers him to attack. If he, like, if 10 Ghosts is the number he wants, if he wants to take a good trade first. I really want to see if there's something that's going to force him to attack and end this game. So far he's playing it very... Um, I guess tactical, laid back. His only move outs he's doing recently are with his battle cruisers. I think that's a really nice move to just go and snipe a base, by the way. If you have. I think you need four BCs for that, or maybe five. Uh, where you can just Yamato a hatchery and get out instantly. Uh, no risk just taking down an important base for the Zerg. Lowering their eco by. What could it be? Maybe like. 700, 200 a minute. I'm not sure how much you exactly mine from one base, but it should be something like that. Now, currently he's sitting on 2 Thor, 6 tanks, and 10 Ghosts, which to me does not quite feel like the ultimate composition yet, right? What I imagine to be the ultimate composition is something like, you know, 10 tanks, 10 Thors, 10 Ghosts, a Raven. Um, and then if you have supply left, once you sack some SCVs, you can have the BCs as well. You fly around, do some harassment on one side while you push with the tanks on the other side. Now, on Hardwire, a lot of the gameplay is actually about splitting the map. So you can see... You kind of have this middle line over here. Like these bases in the middle are the last bases to take. Both players have seven bases each and then there's the middle bases. So as a Terran, your goal is usually to be even on bases with Zerg. So if you get one of the middle bases, you're going to be in a good spot. But first Maru still has to secure his seventh base. But honestly so far he's doing uh, just fine, right? His income is looking good. Um, obviously... Terran usually mines out a little bit slower than Zerg. Like, I know we have mules, but Zerg takes the bases a bit faster. So you can see the middle base on the right side is already a little bit mined. Um, so there's not that much of a rush for Maru. It's more about efficiency than, than getting things up fast. And you can kind of see that in his play as well. He, he always plays very fast early on. His fourth base is super fast. His fifth base is super fast. But after his fifth base, he actually takes it a little bit more slow. Always being attacked there. Let's see how this goes. 
This does not look like a terrifying army for Sarah here. Oh my god, those snipes are insane. I feel like he just killed like 500 supply. Oh, he doesn't have a scam. <laughs> that's that's a that's a euthermal move right there. That's a euthermal syndrome. I feel like this always happens to me. If I play a late game and I need a scan against the fastest ready T's, I'll just never have it. Um, so in that battle, his main focus, more than anything else, was just getting the ghost in the back. I feel like that's the only thing he really did. He looked over. Uh, he was a little bit late. He didn't see it on the minimap. He only got like the alert of being attacked and then he moved over. And just his main focus was putting the ghost in the back. That's all he did. He had his tank sieged and then he moved the ghost to the back. The, the scariest thing for the ghost obviously being the Banelings, right? Um, Banelings can definitely kill ghosts really fast and if they do get up to your ghost, it's always going to be a really good trade for the Zerg. Now, Sarah has a bigger bank uh, and 10 more supply. But I do feel like Maru's army is just starting to get a little bit out of hand here for Sarah. Like, Maru's gonna snipe these Swarmos now. Honestly, uh, I like I remember watching this moment from the stage when he sniped the Swarmos and the, and the crowd went wild. I don't know if Sarah really minds that. Like, at this point, I feel like Sarah wanted to lose those. Obviously, it's nice to get them uh, so freely. But I feel like overall, that was really not a, a bad thing to have happened for Sarah. Okay, now I want to see how Maru deals with this. He's sending all of his ghosts back to defend, uh, and he's pushing with his tank Thor. And I really want to see how the ghost movement is going to go, because now Sarah is going to run away and come back around. And how is Maru going to deal with this? Or is he just going to push on the right side instead? Like, I feel like this, this push on the left was an amazing move by Maru, by the way. Because Sarah denied the bases on the right, but Maru denied all the bases on the left. And now Maru is actually economically ahead. Like, keep in mind that Sarah mines out his bases a bit faster. So as you can see these arrows in the bottom, Maru's actually mining a little bit more. And I know the screen is going ham, but this is just Maru's POV. Uh, if it's making you dizzy, I apologize. But I really want to see how he deals with all of this. I feel like you can tell that this is a very intense high skill situation. Because I've done Maru POVs before. But this game, more than anything, it really feels like he's going a bit crazy on the movement. Like, I'm not sure if he's stressed out or he just needs to play extra fast. Uh, but it's definitely a little bit extra from normal. Notice that this game he did actually only get armor, by the way, like I said. Uh, he did not go for the, the attack for the bio. Um, doesn't need those. And I, I think it makes sense. Because yeah, ghosts are honestly all about the snipe. If you make a ghost for the basic attack, I feel like you might as well make something else, you know. So um, so yeah, it makes, makes total sense to me. I feel like in other games I've seen him get both upgrades though. So honestly, it's probably a little bit up to interpretation how you want to do it. Now let's see what his army is like now. 17 ghosts, 15 tanks, and 11 hellbats. So he he actually doesn't really have any Thors at this point. I did just see Sero morph 13 Broodlords in the production tab. So I feel like Maru definitely wants to be morphing some or uh, making some Thors soon. Else I think he might be in trouble. Now ghosts are good against Broodlords, but if there's fungals as well, you definitely want a little bit more than just ghosts. As you can see here, oh, Sarah with the neural. I don't know if you guys saw what happened there. Sarah neural the ghost and then EMP the other ghost. As you can see, these ghosts are all out of energy. Uh, that's a really cool move. Maru reacted instantly as well with the, with the instant scan, but still, uh, Sarah got the EMP off very fast by both. Now, Maru is making Thors. Uh, I think he probably does not want to engage this. Yeah, he's running the SCPs away. He does not want to engage this before he has more Thors. Um... Yeah, if you fight straight up with Ghost against Brutal Infester, you're gonna get fungal that you're not gonna have a good time. Like the ghosts don't really do a fantastic job in that case. But if you have the if you have a lot of tanks, um or rather just enough tanks to shoot down the infestors, accompanied by Thors to tank the Brute Lords, that's when the fight uh, goes really well for you. And in this case, Maru has uh, I think he's especially been doing a really good job on denying the bases. Like Sarah's economy is absolutely in shambles. Every time Sarah pushed him. Maru pushed him back and did twice as much damage. And if you want to look at the map now, Cyril's literally just stuck in his own corner on four bases. He actually, this is his last mining. Literally, that's how much damage Maru has done. And Maru's going to mine from here. He's going to mine from here. He can take this base soon. Uh, he's still mining a little bit from here as well. And the economy game right now is not even close. And the main reason for that is just those super well-timed pushes on the left and the right side. When the Brutlers attacked on the right, uh, he, or on the middle, I should say. He had, he snuck by on the right with a little tank Hellbat squad, denying those bases. 
Kevin Serro attacked on the right side with his... Um, it was a more mobile armor back then, like Ravager, Ling Bane pretty much. He pushed on the left side, then I three bases. Um, and I think that was actually the most important moment here in this game. When Mario pushed on the left side, denying those three bases in the left top corner. Um, that's when Serro, you know, got into trouble. Because up until then, it was honestly a very even game. But just that one push swung the game into Mario's favor. Oh, this seems a little bit problematic here. He does have one tank. Oh, two tanks. Without those two tanks, Mario would have gotten owned there. Uh, but those two tanks targeting down three investors was huge. Now, he's basically just making hell bad Thor at this point. Uh, I mean, he has 17 ghosts, which is more than enough. So you can really see how he's swinging the composition back and forth. Serald was not making any Brutler, so he was quite literally on pure Hellbat tank ghost. And now the Brutler is out, he's making pure Thor Hellbat ghost instead of the tanks. Um, actually getting plus one air or a bio attack upgrade as well. Uh, so he is gonna go for those ghost attacks. I guess you might as well get it if you have this many ghosts right at some point. And look at the counter attacks once again, man. Actually, these units are doing so much damage and... At this point, it might feel small, but he pulled Serral's army back. He's doing more damage. He's trading out the tanks that he does not really want. Like, these moves are just uh, incredible by Maru. Oh, he even scans for that investor. Oh, that was beautiful, actually. Everything is going so fast, but I did catch that move still, which is nice. And you can see Maru is really trying to get his mining back up. That That's what his move was for, because Maru had all the supply, but... When he had 15 tanks, his army wasn't up to par. Now he's bought so much time with his runbys that now his army is 10 Thors instead of just the one Thor he had. And now he should be able to compete with his army quite well. Ravagers, speaking from a Terran POV, are one of the most tasty snacks for a ghost you can have. It's 100-100, very easy targets for the snipes. And at this point he just has so many ghosts. I think there's not even enough investors to really fungal this anymore. And GG, and that's gonna be it. And Maru once again... Uh, yeah, shows pretty much the perfect formula for Mech TVZ. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys some thoughts though. Still, that this style is definitely the best on maps like this. Hardwire is honestly 100% the best map for it. Other maps that you could try this on are Glittering Ashes. I think it's a pretty good campy map. Probably not quite as good for Mech, but it is a pretty easy map to turtle on. Blackburn is a good map for Mech. Besides those maps, you're probably gonna have a tough time. But if this, if this style is really your vibe, honestly, try it out. Um, if you get anywhere near as good as Mara is it, you're, you're going to have a pretty good time, I think, on the ladder. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this POV analysis of Maru. More to come, so don't forget to like and sub. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios.